Here we have the definite integral, going from 3 to 4, of the square root of w squared minus 3 divided by w. So we have a form u squared minus a squared, which tells us we're going to use the Pythagorean identity that secant squared of theta minus 1 equals tangent squared of theta. So in this case, u is w and a is square root of 3. So that means that u equals a secant of theta, or in this case, w equals square root of 3 secant of theta. We know we're going to need to also find what dw is, so taking the derivative, we have dw equals square root of 3 times secant of theta times tangent of theta d theta. And we can go ahead and look at this w squared minus 3. We know we're going to plug in if we have a squared secant squared of theta minus a squared, that equals a squared tangent squared theta. So since w squared equals square root of 3 times secant of theta, that means that we have w squared minus 3 equals 3 tangent squared theta. So our new integral is going to be the square root of 3 tangent squared theta divided by our new w is square root of 3 times secant of theta and dw is square root of 3 times secant theta times tangent theta g theta. So our square root of 3's cancel out and our secant of theta's cancel out. So we're going to figure out the bounds in a moment. So we're going to be left with the integral of square root of 3 times tangent squared theta times tangent theta d theta. So well, let's figure out the bounds. We have w's going from 3 to 4. So we need to rewrite that in terms of theta. We know that w equals square root of 3 secant theta. So we can solve that equation for theta. We know w divided by square root of 3 equals secant theta. So that means that the inverse secant of w divided by square root of 3 equals theta. And since w is going from 3 to 4, we know that what's inside of this inverse secant is always going to be positive w divided by square root of 3 is always greater than 0. So that means that our theta is going to be from 0 to pi over 2, where pi over 2 is not included. That's where we have to restrict our theta to. So our bounds are now the inverse secant of 3 divided by square root of 3 to the inverse secant of 4 divided by square root of 3. So we can separate out our square root, so we get the square root of 3 times the absolute value of tangent of theta times tangent of theta d theta. And our bounds are the same. So tangent of theta is always going to be greater than or equal to 0 since theta is between 0 and pi over 2. And if you need to convince yourself of that, go ahead and look at your unit circle. But that means that the absolute value of tangent of theta times tangent of theta is going to be tangent squared of theta. So what we really have is the square root of 3 times the integral of tangent squared of theta d theta, where our bounds are going from the inverse secant of 3 divided by square root of 3 to the inverse secant of 4 divided by square root of 3. And we're going to rewrite tangent squared of theta as the integral of secant squared of theta minus 1. 
and that's because hopefully you're going to recognize what the integral of secant squared of theta is. So the integral of secant squared of theta is tangent of theta. So we have square root of 3 times tangent of theta, and the integral of 1 is theta. So we have square root of 3 times tangent of theta minus theta, and where that's going from the inverse secant of 3 divided by square root of 3 to the inverse secant of 4 divided by square root of 3. So we could go ahead and plug these in for theta to solve our definite integral. That's one option. But we might find it easier to convert this back to w instead and use our old w bounds. So if we want to write square root of 3 times the quantity tangent of theta minus theta, then we need to figure out what tangent of theta and theta are. So we know that w divided by square root of 3 equals secant of theta. And secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. So we have our triangle, we have the adjacent is square root of 3, opposite, or hypotenuse is w, so that means the opposite side is the square root of w squared minus 3. So tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's the square root of w squared minus 3 divided by square root of 3, and theta, we found that theta was the inverse secant of w divided by square root of 3. So minus the inverse secant of w divided by square root of 3, and our w bounds were from 3 to 4. So now we can plug those bounds in and find an answer. All right. So plugging the bounds in, we get the square root of 3 times the big quantity, the square root of 4 squared minus 3 divided by square root of 3 minus the inverse secant of 4 divided by square root of 3 minus the big quantity, plugging in 3, the square root of 3 squared minus 3 divided by square root of 3, minus the inverse secant of 3 divided by square root of 3. So remember that we could have plugged in our bounds up here for theta, and we would have gotten the same answer, but we would have had to have found tangent of the inverse secant of 4 divided by square root of 3, which you could have done, it's just using different trig skills.